improving not, sentiment not on with Friday, but off <clears throat> no improving sentiment with respect to getting a deal. Um, also, a, a series of macroeconomic numbers from China that should be clearly increasing their incentive to want to do a deal. And if you simply walk through their August data, urban fixed asset investment, for example, is increasing better than 7 percent, but private sector investment less than 5, right? The whole targeted stimulus was supposed to get money to private sector small and medium enterprises. Their industrial production, steel, is piling up in the corner again. Mobile phone production is falling at a 6 percent annualized rate. Their profits numbers are negative, but sales are positive. So they're, they clearly have massive margin pressure as a consequence of all this. So, you know, they, they But it doesn't change the general bargain that we all know, which is that they can survive for another 12 months quite comfortably if necessary. They're not going to fall into a recession. So, so the nuance is not... Oh, I, I would argue that as, as it pertains to the rest of the world, they're already sending out a negative recessionary impulse. This is their second one in five years. First, when their heavy industry sector collapsed from 14 to 16, steel, you know, cement, all those companies, ordinary imports are falling at a 20 percent annualized rate. That's what they pull out of the rest of the world. Right now, that's falling at a 6 percent annualized rate. So as it pertains to the rest of the world, China's pretty much already, you know, sending a negative or recessionary impulse out there. So what does that mean in terms of where investors should be putting their money? Should they be steering clear of China and arguably emerging market economies that could be very exposed to China and also potentially Germany? I mean, I just think about Fred Smith from FedEx and, and saying that the contraction they're seeing there is because of China. It's funny. You know, you asked that. I put a, um, a relative performance chart of the MSCI Emerging Market Index into my note this weekend. I originally downgraded emerging markets relative to developed markets when I wrote the asset allocation portion of the Barclays Global Outlook in December of 2010. There's been like a period of about six months of stabilization in emerging markets, but they've underperformed massively that whole time period. So now sort of piling on and saying, hey, you should sell them now, I think is probably not a great idea. And if there is a deal, you could get a ferocious rally in emerging markets. So. It's a little tricky. I think I'd be more inclined to be looking for a spot to buy emerging market equities than sell them, as bearish as I may sound on, on the Chinese economy and, and relative impulse. Mark, would you get a ferocious rally in U.S. equities if you got a, a deal as well? I think so. I mean, I, I don't know that it's going to happen. Obviously, you'll see an improvement in sentiment right away, right? And it, it's going to take a little while for the earnings to really kick in, though. You know, I think that there's been some damage that's been done that's going to be long-lasting. So I think if there were a trade deal, you'd see multiples expand. You would see the market rally. We would definitely blow through the, the most recent high of, what, 30, 28 or whatever it was, without a doubt. Barry, just quickly, the deal with Japan and if USMCA gets confirmed, are those as bullish as a China deal would be? No, not at, not at all. And, and um, they'll help sentiment on the margin. But quite frankly, all of these things move in the same direction, which is to make it more difficult to do foreign direct investment. I mean, USMCA, the investor dispute settlement um, part of the, the deal basically makes it much riskier to invest directly in Mexico.